clearly in this part of the city, those are shared concerns. There needs to be some response. I think that is more convincing. Let me let me clarify about the lead. The ambient level of lead in in uh, soils is somewhere around 40 parts per million, and uh, and in urban areas up to 200. Uh, yes, I'm aware of that. Right. So if you find 70 parts per million, it's actually not surprising. I'm There's talking about the allowable amounts that OEHH has done in their revised California screening for toxic level less that will make a point going up. And it was used to be 150 mm -hmm. ambient. You're and now about, they've brought it down to eight. Blood. And I'll, I'll give this to you. Okay. And also with the uh, chemical reports from Silver Terrace from the Center for Environmental Health. Okay? okay? So, so the, all right. So I don't want to get too much into the, the detail of this. I mean, but you're talking about two different things, the levels of the soil, yes, and then also the childhood blood. Right. Which they, they don't have a safe level of lead identified. You're absolutely right about that. Yeah. So it's something we should avoid in every way we can. I I'm just saying that the, that the, the erstwhile allowed amount of 150 has been formally brought down to yes. 80. Yes. Okay. And that Silver Terrace is 76 plus or minus 5 as it is now for the tire crop. And what we're, and what we're hoping for is not to have any in the, in the turf products. Yeah, well, there's so there are all that's, these that's things the, are out we there. Mean, the <laughs> and so we've been working <laughs> on the first stand. They're okay. playing on it. What do you mean, hope? Oh. I mean, okay. there's, there's no there. hope in the right. product. Wrong word, wrong word. It's, wrong it's either definitive or... See, that's what I'm trying to understand, folks, why we call this. There's too much sort of ambiguity in some of the answers, and you have to appreciate, in my position, these are concerns we haven't been able to address. So I'm catching on to these terms. You guys have got to be clear with us on this. And I believe it's probably there, but that's what I'm looking to make sure that it's solidified. Okay, I'll make it really clear. Thank you. We have a draft turf specification which I believe Rec and Park is planning to use that sets it at 50 parts per million, which is basically ambient. Yeah, but the, but the, the tire... Let, let him answer okay. and then respond if we have to. So that's that. I mean, basically it's saying they can't add lead purposefully to the product, period. That's it's, the best we can do on, on that. But it's not added. It's already in the, there in the tire, tire product. Tire so tire it's an intrinsic tire. part. Not it's good. an intrinsic part of the actual product itself. I mean, I've read the documents. And so I'm trying to understand that is it something that we, we embrace with caution, or is it benign? It's, it's not something that's an intrinsic part of tire rubber. It's, it's in the dirt. It's in the soil, it's in the, the urban, it's in, you know, it's probably there from when we had leaded gas in the city. But in the tire rubber, when they've done the tests on that, it's not, that is not something that has registered as greater than ambient. So, I have proof. So, Hold on, somebody I'd love to see I'd love right. to see I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Thank you. I'm going to keep going around this, and I'll come back over this way, I promise. Yes. My name is Jeff. I live with, within in the community. I just, to give you, I, just want to, I just want to give you a history of what I've experienced since I was a child playing soccer and playing in playing field sports. Beach LA, Beach LA was a field which was just rocks and dirt and glass. Crocker Amazon was also a field that just included glass, dirt, and that was it. We can have all these studies done, but what are we going to do if we have to drive to fields outside of the city? We're going to have larger climate change. With regards to Portrayal ma Hill Matter, people are upset because they say they don't want the artificial turfs because there's a problem with dogs. This, is, I believe, is going to be a great use for the community because what I've seen living in the community is that right now it's not being used fully. And I hope that it will be useful. I just hope it will be used fully. I mean, it's a it's a great it's a great thing that the city has. Otherwise, we're going to lose our youth Two programs. Cameras, we're going to we're going to use our youth, we're going to lose our youth programs. We're now losing our golf programs. They are now going to other communities. We're losing revenue in this city because we do not have enough fields, or the fields are not adequate for our for our adults as well. So. 
I believe we don't have this, but we're going to be losing All right, appreciate it. So there's an Thank advocate you. point. I like to make sure that people are using time for questions, okay? Um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, to, I'm trying to do boy, girl, boy, girl. Um, I'm sorry, this lady right now. Um, mine is in support of the uh, project. My name is Emily Kempizak. I'm the associate director with SCORES, uh, Soccer and Literacy Program. And I speak for the children, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth graders of the Western Edition. Mm -hmm. um, I manage a couple of schools here, and I just wanted to say that this, this project will definitely support the community that we're trying to build, that we've done in the Mission, we're doing in the Hunter's Point, and we want to do this here in the Western Edition. So I just want to say thank you to those who support this and to all the Park and Rec part behind this, but um, we're all for the kids, and my program is committed to building the community, everyone here, not just once a year, but on the field every Saturday, when we can, working with other groups, such as Sacred Heart or whoever it may be, so I just want to thank everybody for this opportunity. Thank you. Um, just speaking as an athlete here, I've played on our turf before, it's a bit like running on carpeted concrete, it's very painful to play on for long periods of time. In the game that I played on it, within about 15 minutes, uh, several players, including myself, had injured themselves. And I was wondering, well, kids honestly want to play on a field that makes players more injury prone, and it's just flat out uncomfortable to play on. Dana? Thank you I think very much. So Dana, just so you know, was the parent volunteer, the parent coordinator of Vikings Soccer as a volunteer for many, many years. Now. So which is one of the city's youth soccer leagues. Mm -hmm. so you want to play soccer in his neighborhood? Stand up. Question of what fields do people want to use, whether it's high schools, they want to use, they will drive across town to go to Crocker to play their games because the fields are pure hapatals, they like the, the softness of it. I don't know if you played on the new generation fields as opposed to the old AstroTurf fields, which were hard, but our new, um, the new generation fields, again, I, nev I never have somebody say to me, don't put me on those fields, put me on the grass fields. That just, that, that doesn't happen, except for a few baseball purists who like dirt and want to slide in dirt. Those are the ones that- Well, <laughs> name, the, name the new generation fields now. The, the ones like we're doing versus the old AstroTurf. For, for the public, name the names, please. Oh, Crockers, South Sunset, Silver Terrace, Garfield, Franklin, and Young Blood Coleman. So they're spread all over the feet city, except there's actually not one in this area of town. Um, and so, um, and so that's that. This area is missed it. Um, and the, all I can just say is, as they come up, it's the first choice field that the kids want to use, and the adults. Okay. So you have a different. You know, I'm just telling you what I do. These kids. My name is Callan Taylor, and I live in the neighborhood. I'm also a teacher. I've taught at Sacred Heart Elementary School on Felon Fillmore Mission for eight years, and now yep. I'm at John O'Connell, or John Adams at the High School Diploma Program. And many of my students live here. I have two children, and we go to Kimball Park at least three to four times a week. They are two and three years old. I saw at Mission and from working at Sacred Heart, it seemed like there was always a deficit at the school level. You know, bad text, old textbooks, yucky classrooms, we were missing things. And then I have kids and I go to Kimball Park and we found a dead rat on the field. There's been cat poop in the thing, there's a methadone clinic. And so I started the Friends of Kimball Park meeting and it's been about a year. And there's four of us that go consistently. Um, there's Dennis and then Leonard and Tony in the back. And we've had four cleanups, and it's the four of us were there in the rain on Saturday edging the meadow. Um, and I personally go out by foot with my kids, and I post up my signs everywhere. And I go to the library. I talked to Al at Pal. Uh, I went down to the field, and I gave him the sign for this. I try to go to the barber shops. I've called churches, and also. I'd love all of you guys to come to our meeting every first Tuesday of the month at the Marcus Garvey Center here on Eddy. And I am also putting posters up, and I've had one play date, and only a student, one of my former no. students came with their kid, to try to get information and output so we can start planning the playground. Um, so I have spent a lot of footwork doing that. And then one day I was putting a poster up, and it was interesting because a woman said they only put this in the poor neighborhoods. So I found out 
SI, an elite high school in the city, has this field. And then, as a teacher in the school district, I brought some of my students from Indiana County. Washington has it. Galileo has it. And then other students that were saying they'd gone to Danville for a soccer tournament, and they have it, which is, a, I guess, a nice suburb. So I don't think it's necessarily poor neighborhoods. What poor neighborhoods do have is not a lot of community space. And this neighborhood, it's more than just the field. It's lighting, you know, like lighting to make it safe for kids to go walking around, um, for parents in the dusk to go take their kids. Fences, I've been there where I've seen the Little League kids go through the fence because it was locked and I had to actually call Jim because they all, you know, turned to me because I have him. And he came and he unlocked the fence because little kids were going underneath because they could not get into the field. That, I mean, having another thing about when I think about kids and you brought up the diabetes, that is huge. And I'm at my the high school and PE classes are 60 kids in it. This is an area where kids can run. My kids love it there. And it's a mess. And so I can't even imagine how great it's going to be when it's nice and you have the park across the street. And then we can fix up the playground. And we have a beautiful meadow. But we need more people to come to these meetings and talk. And when I hear that not talking about for the kids or not talking about the community, we all, you know, we post out all the emails. But I just think, like, when I think safety, healthiness, a new field where many more kids can play and it's safe. Safe just beyond the, the you know, like the particulate matter, but safe so they oh, don't feel no scared to needs. walk down the street at night because it's dark or into the bathrooms. I don't know if any of you have ever been into the bathrooms at Kimball, but it is a nightmare. An absolute nightmare. And I have two kids that are being potty trained and it is a scary, scary yes. spot. Yeah. Well, so to think that they would clean that up and add batting cages, I just see it as like a beautiful whole community thing. And as far as gentrification, I saw that there. If you're saying that only nice neighborhoods should deserve parks, well, then I think that's sad too. So. Thank you. Hey, let me delineate the truth here. With regard to rehabilitation of bathrooms, that has nothing to do with this project. That's a park bond. And, and on other matters, long before this issue came up, we've been asking for better lighting and better tree management so that it would be uh, respectful of neighborhood uh, ability to see through and feel uh, safe from, you know, those who might use trees as a way to sort of uh, eclipse, you know, one's view, line of sight. So what the fields does versus what has also been scheduled for, because the bathrooms in the city and rec and park have been horrible. Uh, I had to push hard for Panhandle, which was the first bathroom of its kind, uh, and that's been sort of the example of bathroom now. Alamo Square, we had to fight very hard to get the thing unlocked. <laughs> um, in Alamo Square, and Kimball bathroom is no different than many bathrooms, but as it relates to, I think, the overall conversion, I want to hear what is being projected as part of this program, more than just the field, and more than what we just passed in the bond, what are the other sort of bennies, the perks that are coming with us? Well, I think, uh, Ross, it is a, a, a bit of a package, we're very blessed to actually have two major projects here at Google. It's not just the park renovation and it's right. not just City Fields, it's actually both. And the City Fields project, through both philanthropy and Rec and Park's own contributions, separate and apart from the 2008 Parks bond, is about $3 million. And then the cost of the renovation of the clubhouse and the meadow uh, as part of the 2008 Parks bond is what? I think it's $3.7 million under that bond. Right. So all things to, I mean, together, we get a $7 million park renovation here, which is really rather special and a, and a unique opportunity. Would bathrooms have been renovated under the parks bond? Perhaps, although we've had a restroom task force where we have a lot of neighborhood parks that did not get their money for bathrooms. Meredith Thomas is here from the Neighborhood Parks Council, has been an advocate of the restroom uh, and a participant on the restroom tax task force. Not There is money that is set aside in the 2008 parks fund, but we don't have enough to renovate all of the bathrooms. I think uh, the security and the lighting and the design features that have happened at Crocker and at Silver Terrace, I don't think there's anybody that doesn't use those facilities. And at Garfield, that doesn't, and Franklin doesn't believe that the parks are safer than they used to be, regardless of the source of the park renovation. So I think, is it just because of City Fields? No. 
But we have a great right. opportunity here. No, no, no disagreement on that, but I want to make clear that what is being scheduled for some of this was already in the queue in terms of what some of those upgrades were not, anyway. Not it, the new lighting? I, I, mean, I, mean, I, I mean, that's not true. I fought for this. Okay. So I fought for this. Just like the Hamilton rebuild, the $17 million rebuild, this is our work product right. from Capital well, Improvement. And, and by the way, I mean, I want to kind of throw it a little bit. You and I have had one conversation about this, but a, but a potential vision here between the Hamilton rebuild, which, by the way, will remain for us, where we're going to have the, a brand new swimming pool with two water slides, and we're going to have a rehab gym and a rehab community center, and we're going to have tennis courts refurbished. And new green space with a new library between that facility and then Kimball. Yeah. When you think about the link of those two facilities, you have just an incredible opportunity around. I, I, I will say, Kimball, I mean, Hamilton across the street will probably have one of the best what pools in the city. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Wow. Yeah. What did the kids go? I, I just want to. There. A couple of things. I, I, I certainly oh, out, Dad, hope we're not saying that the only way we can be safe is we have to trade away a real valuable green space in a neighborhood that doesn't have a whole lot. That, that, that's kind of a, um, uh, it, it, I think it's terrible to discuss the two together because it, we, we shouldn't have to acquiesce if we don't think it's right just so we can feel safe in our local park. That, that's one thing. Uh, just a couple of things as quickly, real quickly is that number one, part of your problem is, and, and Phil, you weren't here at the time, is this started bad. And if it starts bad, it's real hard for it to end up end up good. When your people finally came to the CAC, Citizens Advisory Committee, that I was chairing at the time, they their outreach had been to the west side of the park. Only the west side where the majority of homeowners live. Where you had subsidized housing, public housing. People at Pitts didn't get no. The people across the street at King Garden didn't get noticed on that first meeting you had. So uh, that, that was a real problem. And then you came to the CAC, which I believe was the first real serious opposition that this thing ran into. And then you created a task force. I don't know anybody from the neighborhood that was on it. Uh, I, and so we di didn't know you had one till tonight after all the sand we raised at the CAC. No one ever got back to us and we had no idea that I took tonight that you had put together a task for discussion. Just want to tell you some things that maybe you can answer, maybe, maybe not. Uh, I don't know that you have any idea what water running off this surface is going to do in eight, nine, ten years mm -hmm. after it's been used, after it breaks down somewhat, after it's been that some of the uh, color has been faded by the sun. The the I, I, I don't think there's any way you could know. And to talk about this guy, right. you don't know if he used one of the new generation field at his age. If he used the old one, he'd have been three. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what other kind he could have used. And that was another question I had. No one spoke at all about the injury factor to athletes. My experience has been with turf, they're more frequent and they're more serious. And when you so so we start talking about blown out knees and ACLs in Pop Warner. And, and you're looking at, at 11, parents 12, who now know. have an extra added cost to an already, you know, uh, uh, as hard as hell to live in, in, in this country right now and in this city. And now we're adding potential greater medical costs. And no one, and none of your presentation did you speak to that. And I think it's very important that you look at that and give us some kind of assurances on that. Um, and, and then, you know, there's, you, you talked about the organized play, and that's very good. But see, my concern, you know, besides the fact, Phil knows I'm a baseball guy, I'm a real purist. I don't re really like going to American League games because it got designated hitters. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they don't do squeeze bunts. But, but at the same time, you know, so I understand I have a bias, and I'm trying to really work through my bias. But as I'm trying to work through it, one, I believe kids, when they go to the park, they ought to get dirty. Yeah. You just believe yeah. that. But I'm also concerned beyond organized play, what about disorganized play? See, when you talk about it's used 50% uh, by adults, yeah, but it's used 100% by the people who go there to play tag, not baseball. But for the little kids who go in the park and play what we used to call grab, you know what. Uh, and just fool around in the park and Never roll on the grass in a summer day. That kind of activity is absolutely essential to, to nerve. I don't know that we still have butterflies in San Francisco, 
but we chased them in and around the ball diamonds when there was no game being played. The, the, the question of spontaneous play by children is absolutely essential that no one has, has, has talked about it. All in all, all in all, you need something, we need something here that continues to foster community. And I think that um, one of the things that happens, and, 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 and another thing that started out bad, is the program that you have in place now, I'm glad to see it, but that ain't what you brought to us. And that tells me that what you brought to us is what you really wanted. And that was a, 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 a program that was heavy, with adult play, and when, when, you know, I played as an adult, softball and all that stuff, but when I was growing up playing ball, adults used the field when we weren't mm -hmm. using it. They had to work their schedule around us. You first. And youth have priority, they That's come first. Right. And I hear what you're saying, but I also remember what was brought to us at the first CAC meeting. And while I know some, there are many of you who mean well, I think there's some of you who don't really in terms of what we think is right. So I got some issues that you haven't satisfied yet. So, so first of all, I, I, Reverend Townsend is a, is a dear friend of mine and we've known each other for a long time. And I, you know, absolutely respect what you have to say and it shows that reasonable minds can actually have different points of view and different perspectives with, with respect and with good communication. He and I share a great passion for baseball and for baseball and natural grass. I grew up in Philadelphia where this astroturf really was on the cement. It was terrible. Um, I want to address a couple of points, though, that, that, that you referenced. First, community process, and you made the point that um, that it didn't start well. Well, look, you know, we're sorry. I mean, honestly, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. This is our city as a community. It's not Reckon Park City. It's not. It's, it's our city, and to the extent that's why I was. You know, I was very quick to be here tonight. I mean, I believe in community process and community dialogue and community discussion. Achieving 100% consensus is impossible. But, so we will do better. And we will learn from the mistakes that we have made and we will try to do better the next time we do this. And, uh, you know, that's the, the, the very best I can give all of you. Uh, with respect to kids' injuries, I want to come back to that because I think that that is an issue that was actually looked at by the the task force as I understand it. Um, disorganized play, uh, I, I, as, you, as you talked about Reverend Townsend, here's the thing, what was is there really was no time for disorder, what the status quo is no time for disorganized play on these fields, which because they are so heavily used, now, I'm not saying kids never sneak on there and, and run around and, and play tag, but there was, <coughs> doesn't there suggest there were quite as many hours of use on the field? It actually, but that's because of what's available to us. It actually allows us to have scheduled disorganized play. That's like a contradiction in terms. It's not a contradiction in terms. It means it's time where there will be nobody on the field. It's time that won't have lead play. Right now, right now it's catches, catch, catch, catch. Okay, which will always be the case. There will, always, there will always be catches, catch, catch, right? A team doesn't show, there's a little bit of space, kids run on the field. Well, we haven't had it, people, because it's been so heavily used mostly by adults, is time when we have said, we're not going to permit these fields. We're going to let people play. So our hope is to actually improve that. All right. And then lastly, with respect to the, the plan for adults, that's one, Reverend Townsend, where, again, knowing that we can always do better on process, I do disagree with you on that, which is that we didn't start out trying to come up with an opportunity to sneak more, uh, come up with more adult softball. It's quite the contrary. The condition by which we have been able to enjoy some of the philanthropic <coughs> gifts, which please do not underestimate in this really, really difficult budget time, the amount of, 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 of philanthropy that has gone into these projects citywide. The condition was that we revamp our permits and reservations system, and that we place far more priority on schools and on youth sports. So we were actually told, as a condition of entering into this partnership, that we had to be better. So citywide, Actually, I mentioned the, the uh, citywide, I think the number, what was the number about the total amount of increased play? 62,000 hours citywide through the city fields projects. 35,000 of those hours is because of the fact that we've reprioritized and redone our permits and reservation system to provide more opportunities for kids.
kids. So that's what we're trying to do. That's what we've been trying to do citywide, and that's what we're trying to do at Kimball. Dan, please uh, address the issue of, of injuries on turf versus injuries on some of our gopher filled. Right. Uh, it, it's a difficult discussion to have because there's a lot of comparison out there against professional sports and such. But the task force, one of the 11 uh, goals of that, that thing was to look uh, at injuries, injury data on synthetic turf field. And there was a plethora of information that was looked at, and it's in the report, and it's available on the website, and all the documentation that was reviewed. But at, at the bottom line is basically the injury rates for uh, synthetic turf went down. And, and not to get into the technical, there's, there's the broken bone, broken ankles, or head contusions. There's a whole vast uh, array of injuries that can happen on athletic fields. But the